Hi there, Robin here from Expert Island, and today we're going to be talking about this right here, which is the Mackie Thump 18S 1200-watt bandpass subwoofer. Absolutely a perfect design box for if you're going to be indoors or outdoors, if you're going to be in a small hall or a big hall, something with a high ceiling or a low ceiling. It sounds weird, but it's kind of that design. It band pass means that the subwoofer is inside the actual unit, in this case flipped backwards. It's going to give us a thundering amount, or a thump, as they like to call it, amount of bass. It's going to come right through the actual box, so we're not relying on a big forward firing system. It is 18 inches, it is 1200 watts. It's going to create a ton of bass. So today we're going to look at the back, look at the front, as we're doing right now. We're going to give it a sound test. I'm going to try and pick it up and put it on the table, and then we'll take a closer look at all the connectors on the back. If not, we're going to do it all from the floor right here. So. See you in the next half, and we're going to do the sound test portion. All right, so here we are. We've got ourselves set up. We've got an actual Mackie Thump 12A set up on the top. We've got the 18S set up at the bottom. We hooked it up to the mixer. We've got some actual music playing. Yes, royalty free, because that's what it's all about on YouTube. I think we're just promoting whoever YouTube wants us to, and that's why we use royalty free. But this is a great little piece that's going to actually really help make it sound right. Hopefully it transfers over on the camera. I've got a mic on the camera, which is picking it up, and I'm wearing a lapel as well to help with everybody who's been asking me about improving the overall audio. So here we are. I'm going to turn it up a bit. We're going to take a listen to it. I'm going to turn down the volume on the top so you just hear the bass and we'll transfer back and forth. So first we turn it up. subwoofer only and dial the subwoofer back so you know we had the subwoofer at 75 percent we're going to bring the top back up to neutral which is 12 o'clock top only sub still running a little bit can't you dial that off completely but we can bring that in now so now we've got the bottom we've got the top sub top pretty much just the top now no sub and we'll bring it all back in play That, just so you have an idea, is set up uh, about 10, 12 feet away from the camera, uh, giving us a rough idea of what it proportionally looks like. So outside of that, it is a big sub. We're gonna try and get it from here off to the table so we can see how we had it plugged in. And because the Mackie and by design, they built in some redundancies, so we'll cover out all those features as well. And we'll talk a bit more about the design, the band pass. All right, so decided not to actually Put it on the table it turns out it's way too heavy and i'm not picking this up and putting it on the table so we're going to cover the features that we have right here now as we notice they are three pin xlr connections we've got two inputs so if you're using one subwoofer and you're going to hook it up to two speakers you can run your two channels in the here first if you want to use this as let's say your high pass and that means i don't want my extra bass that this is going to do for me running into my speakers so I can plug in my two channels in the here, and then I can go to my first powered speaker or back to the amplifier and my second powered speaker. Now, remember, if I'm only gonna use one channel, this under one system, put it here. If I wanna capture both the left and right, bring them both here first, and then still connect out of the two units here. So normally, unless you only have one speaker and one subwoofer, you're, you're gonna bring both to here and off you go. Now. Again, there are speaker brands that have the ability to do that for you, and they tend to be a little bit like so, a little bit upscale. So, yes, the Thumps, uh, the 15A and the 12A both offer the ability to go to the, uh, to the speaker first on top, then down below here. Uh, so, that's another way. But again, depending on what brands and models you have, you're very versatile with this product because you can use it either as a full range output 
or high pass, which means I don't want to cut the actual, uh, sorry, high pass. I do want to cut the uh, base out of it. Full range, I don't want to cut the base out of it. Maybe I have a second subwoofer side by side. I can come out of here into the next sub just like that. Anyways, I wanted to show you how the back was on this. Now what we'll do is we'll zoom out a bit. We'll capture the overall look of the piece and see what's going on. They do have, by the way, you can't see it, but down below there's diagrams and showing you how to hook this all up. So what I say is in the pictures, which is kind of cool and easy to use. All right. By the way, that is your gain control. So neutral's up on top. We can throw some extra in there. We can back off a bit on it. And there's also, you know, player, which way do I want to drive the sub forward or back? Uh, I've got that option right here with that button there. So there we go. All the screws are all lined up on the back here. So if you need to see the subwoofer, that's how you're going to look inside of it. It's kind of a funky thing. We should do that one day. Take one apart and see what's actually going on. All right. So here we are. We've got the subwoofer. We've got to turn around. Gives you a visual of what's going on in the back. This is what we were just talking about. So there's our control panel. The bottom is our power plug and our switch. Everything's all built in. There's the diagram I was just talking about. So here we are. If you ever do want to look at the subwoofer, these are the screws I'm referring to on the back plate right here. So now if you're going to have this somewhere on a carpeted space or any space at all, and you want to be able to move it around because you got to take it with you and go back and forth, put it on some pucks. So any subwoofer is better on pucks unless you're actually bringing it out to a gig and you're going to have it on a stage or a platform. You want to have it rest solid. Don't use the pucks. Now, all very solid, all wood, that is for sure. Metal handles, I don't get any vibrations out of there. Now, occasionally I might have it a little too loud or, or I'm overclocking on my gain controls a little high. I get a little bit of uh, rumbling sounds out of it. I think it's just because the frequency, I'm pushing a little too hard. But outside of that, if you get it dialed in right, you're playing the right music with it, it is going to be awesome. That is for sure. Now, band pets. Let's talk about this a little bit. So the idea here is that inside this box, roughly about as I stick my hand in right here, as we work our way down to get to the actual speaker, which I can feel is right about halfway. So right about here, you can actually touch the magnet on the backside, which the magnet is here, the back of the speaker is connected here, which leaves us this space here as a cavity, right? So now this is a sealed cavity that's going to generate all the base. Now it also extends cavity wise all the way back up. So this way it's kind of cool, the design of the system, but this is where all the heavy base is happening. So normally you have a forward firing speaker, which is great. And it's throwing out, let's say, hmm, I'm going to say 50% base this way, 50% base in the box. This is probably going to be more like a 75% coming out of the box, 25% coming out of the port. So that's why it works in a lot more scenarios. Uh, again, if you're having a sub like this, you've got a couple of tops on some 15s, uh, maybe some Mackies on top or anything that you probably already have. Then one of these will do you from 50 to 100, 150 people uh, in a, in let's say a wedding scenario uh, where the base is mid level. If you really want to crank it up, let's say you're doing a school dance or something like that, where, you know, lights and base and all that really really counts then definitely you're going to want two of these on the bottom one on each side now that being said if you had this anywhere else let's say you've got a, a, a pub a bar a small setup like that and you just want to get some speaker and you want some extra base and you're only covering let's say 800 to a thousand square feet of actual you know open space one of these is really going to give you a really big punch and it's you know no one's going to damage it it's really built that way so uh Outside of saying it's really heavy, which is why it's on the floor, I'm going to guess we'll have the right weight down below, but I'm going to say it's somewhere around 75 plus pounds, uh, 80 pounds maybe. Um, you know, it's 18 inch subwoofer powered with the amplifier and everything, all wood plus more wood in the front. So it's got some weight to it. Uh, it's good to have it on dolly. If you do, by the way, you want to roll it around, the smartest thing to do is to get a set of blue casters. Those are casters that have no actual bearings inside, just bushing, so they don't rattle and they have locks on them. You screw those on to the back here, and then you can literally tip this subwoofer on its backside, roll it wherever you want, flip it back up, lock the wheels, that's it. Those wheels will not interfere with the noise, will not add any rattling to it because you got the blue ones. You can get them at Home Depot, 
Amazon. I'll put a link to, I'll try and find some blue casters and put them down below, but you have an idea. Bigger, the easier it is. Most people usually get about two, two and a half inch wheels. So that's a nice little add on to any subwoofer you have, as long as all your controls are recessed in the back, you're gonna be good there. So I think we're gonna leave it at that for this one here. I like it, I think it's fun, that's why we bought it. I mean, this is like the core product for us is, is product like this. So if you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Remember, this is the point in time where you're actually gonna see that little round circle somewhere around here. Uh, and that is going to be showing you to subscribe. That's what the palm tree is all about and some new videos. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.